Hey guys, Mr. Ready1235 here again, here to talk about three albums. We're going to be doing a triple album review today. We're going to be talking about Panic at the Disco because it's mine and hers, like, one of our favorite bands ever. It's like one of the only bands that I know of where I like every single song on all three of their albums. Like, even Gorillaz can't do that for me. And you all know how much I love them. Same here. Yeah. This is my girlfriend, Danielle, by the way. You've heard me talk a whole lot about her. And, uh... Yeah. And since she knows about these albums as well as I do, I thought it would be kind of cool if we, maybe we could talk about these together, since both of us know every single song on these albums, and we both know pretty much everything about them. So anyway, I guess we should just start in order by doing this discography review for Panic at the Disco, since they only have three albums. I figured this would probably go pretty quickly. We're going to talk about their very first album, Panic at the Disco, Fever You Can't Sweat Out. Uh, this is their debut album. came out in 2005. Hard to believe it's this old already. Yeah, he went to the concert a long time ago. I did. I saw them. I saw them. Uh, he invited me to go, but we weren't dating at the time, and I didn't know it was a band. I thought that was the name of a song, and then that kind of just blew my chance. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Yeah. Going. And then I learned how great of a band it was after dating him. Yeah, of course. So, uh, yeah, there's some really sick tracks on this thing. It was a good debut. I got into this band from another friend of mine. He, uh, he burned me a copy of this CD, and I thought it was really cool. I thought it was really different. It was a good mix of, like, pop and electronic and rock music all mixed into one thing. And, um... I was really taken by a whole lot of the songs on this thing, especially like songs like Nails for Breakfast, Tax for Snacks, London Beckon songs about money written by machines, <laughs> Lying is the most fun a girl can have without taking her clothes that off. Song. That one's really, really good. That one's one of my favorite. Um, obviously, I write singles about tragedies and Time to Dance. There are just so many awesome songs on this album, so many great ways to start off. And I know Panic at the Disco get a whole lot of hate now. A whole lot of people don't like this band, and I don't know why, but, uh, yeah, so, anyway, oh, and also the song, the song, uh, There's a Good Reason These Tables Are Numbered, Honey, You Just Haven't Thought of It Yet. I have this music video pictured for that song that I've been wanting to make ever since I first heard this album, and it's like, ah, I just want to make that one day, but anyway, what are, what, what do you got to say about it? You can say some points. <laughs> Well, I think it's quite awesome all the way through. I love how it flows. Um, it's got a lot of high energy, and it's got more of a um, like a poppy scent. Well, I don't know. How. It's more poppy than all the other albums, anyway. Or the second album is completely different, anyway. It's very but, pop rock. Yeah. I think. Yeah, pop rock. It's a good way to say it. Um, it's. I don't know. I really love number seven a lot. It's probably my favorite song off this whole album. And like is the most fun a girl can have without taking her clothes off. That's a huge standout for sure. <laughs> for for me, I don't know why. Maybe I'm just crazy. But um, and also you know singles are really good too. But it's I love how it flows. Great flowing album. Good flow. Okay, guys, going on to one that I think me and her both agree on is probably their best album. Uh, this one just makes me happy. Like, <laughs> if you're sad, you really need to turn this CD on because it makes you happy. Automatically smile. There's no matter what mood you're in, you're like mad at the whole world. And you can sit, hop in your car, and this song's on, and you're just like, you know, hey, moon, don't. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm just automatically happy. She's talking, obviously, about Pretty Odd, the 2008 album from these guys. Man. How freaking awesome is this CD? You know, it's like, the instrumentation is so incredible on this thing. I feel like they use, like, every single instrument in the world on this album. Maybe not a sitar. I don't remember hearing sitar in this thing. No. But really, the instrumentation is crazy on this thing. The songs are really unique. The song structure is really different than what you hear. You don't have, like, the normal verse, chorus, verse, bridge, chorus in the song. That's not really on this album. The song structure is very different. And I really enjoy that about this album. Of course, the songs, Nine in the Afternoon, She's a Handsome Woman, That Green Gentleman. Get the whole fucking album. I love this whole thing. Man. Yeah, there's it's, not a song on there that's bad. Yeah, there's seriously not one on here that's terrible. 
The song Mad as Rabbits, the very last song of this album, would definitely be my least favorite, but that's... But I love it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but still. It's a perfect album. It's really fucking awesome. Yeah, there, you can't go wrong with this album. You just can't. Unless you're just somebody who doesn't like the sound or something, I guess. Like, if you like screamo, emo music, then this is not the album for you. Because <laughs> it's definitely happy and not screamo and very bubbly. And I love the lyrics because they make no sense. But that's one thing I love about this band. Is like they're the one band that can make absolutely no sense out of anything that they're writing. Like, anything. Just go and read the lyrics to all their songs. It's crazy. That's very true. Panic at the Disco is a very, <laughs> very creative band. Like I said, the nonsense lyrics, but at the same time, you can't help but just sing along to them. And the thing is, they make you feel emotion, like, without making sense. Like, it's like, what? why does this make me feel, like, love or happy or sad? They're not saying anything to make you feel it. You just automatically feel it through how they're saying. I don't know. It's crazy. <laughs> I don't get it. But it's awesome. Pretty odd. Great. Oh, my God. And then their last album that recently came out in 2011... Uh, Vices and Virtues. On this album, I feel like the band kind of went back to their roots on, like they did on Fever you, Fever you Can't Sweat Out. After the two, the two band members that they had left, I feel like they're kind of taking a road that I'm not a huge fan of. Like, I feel like their next album might even, might be one that I might not like. But I, once again, I like everything on this thing. I just, I guess I just love Pretty Odd so much that I wish they stuck with that, but... I can tell that Brandon and Faglet over here, I can't remember his name. Oh my God. I can tell that they didn't really like Pretty Odd, so they decided to go back and make another pop rock record. But still, you know, the songs Ballad of Mona Lisa, Let's Kill Tonight, Sarah Smiles, and Nearly Witches. The, I will admit, that's some of their best songs right there. <laughs> I really like this album a lot. Um... Obviously, I agree with him on Pretty Odd. I like Pretty Odd the most out of all of them. But um, this one's really good, too. It's got some really catchy songs. It took me a little bit of time to grow into it, but after we went on a beach trip a long time ago, and we had all three of the CDs, I got more and more attached to this one, more than I thought I ever would. And I really ended up liking it a lot. So yeah, once again, these are three perfect albums. Panic at the Disco is a really great band. Once again, I don't understand why people hate on them so much, but I know myself I have fun listening to this band, and that's really all I care about. And um, I look forward to their new release that they might have it coming out this year. Me too. Um, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty jacked about that. I'm looking forward to what they turn up with. Um, same thing with the new Queens of the Stone Age, the new Vampire Weekend. There's a whole lot of albums I'm looking forward to in 2013. New Black Keys, that's another one. Uh, so yeah, I'll be back with some more classic album reviews. Um, did you like her in this video with me? You should. <laughs> She's pretty. She's sweet. So yeah, uh, Mr. Rudy1235, I'll see you guys later.